Hi, I'm Mark. Uh, come with me today. We're going to do a heat loss on this property and I'll show you our process and what we do. Uh, what we're going to do in here first is the when you come into the house, essentially the first room, I usually start with like the lounge or a kitchen, one of the big rooms that's the focal point of the house. Uh, and then I'm going to open it up onto our software, which we use Magic Plan. Uh, we use that because using the iPad with LiDAR technology, it enables us to be able to scan the room uh, and give us an accurate footprint of what that room actually is. So once I've set it up and I've chosen that it's the living room, I then start to move it around the room and it will start picking up all the parts and mapping out the room for me. So once I've confirmed the scan and I'm ready to scan my next room, I then load it up onto here, which then loads that I've, I've scanned this room. And by using LiDAR and the fact that it's my iPad and a location service, when I go to the next room, it will start knitting the rooms together to create my uh, floor plan for me. Now we've got the floor plan done, uh, what we can now do is go into all the rooms uh, we can add things like the emitters, uh, where the cold main stopcock is, where the electrical consumer units are. So when we come to actually quote this job, we'll have all the information that we need and all of the footprint for the house to be able to give it a, a bespoke design for this client that's accurate for their home. For example, if we're putting a radiator onto one wall here, how much space do we actually have if we need to increase the size of that radiator, for example? So by putting this information on here, when we do go back to the office to provide the design, we know exactly what can be fitted. Once we've got all the information which we've just done there and we've input all the emitters uh, onto the plan itself and where all the consumer units are, the stopcocks and whatnot, and we've got all the information that we require from the house, we would then send this, soft, send this plan to another software that we use called Heat Engineer, which enables us to take the floor plan itself and build a room by room heat loss of the building. So we can identify exactly what size emitters that we need in the house to produce the comfort levels that the client wants, and also to know the exact heat loss of the building so we can size the heat pump sufficiently for it. Uh, what we're looking at here is for where we're actually going to put it and also for like the electrical runs and the pipe work runs etc. So looking at the back of this property, we've probably got a couple of locations uh, underneath the kitchen window potentially, uh, as long as it meets that protective zone for the R290 refrigerants. So we've got potentially a spot down there. You've got a spot at the top of the garden here where it could quite easily go. Or even with some units, they can be wall mounted. So we could even look at the side of the house as well. Uh, the other things we've got to bear in mind is we've got to get a flow and return pipe work into the property uh, to be able to provide that heat into the home. And also we want to be able to run some electrical supplies to it to be able to power the unit. So they're two considerations. The final one is that the kit can be quite big. Obviously it's an 1100 by 600 unit for a smaller heat pump. So we need to make sure that it's somewhere that can have a nice sturdy base so it's not going to fall or tilt or be off level or fall over or anything like that. And also the byproduct of a, a heat pump is condensation. So where the condense drops off it when it defrosts and things like that. So it produces a lot of water potentially per hour. So we need somewhere where it's going to be able to drain off and in the winter, not create an ice rink for the customer. So it's a, a safety uh, element there as well. We don't want to create any slip or trip hazards. So when you're outside, we just got to make sure we're finding the right location. And also the location comes into it for the client for somewhere aesthetic. Potentially on this patio, for example, could be somewhere where the client sits of an evening. And um, what they don't want is a, a, a cold air coming off the front of that heat pump where they're going to be sitting. Because no matter what the outdoor air temperature is, the temperature coming off the front of the heat pump is going to be around 10, 12 degrees cooler. So it might be a nice air conditioning unit in the summer, but in the winter, it's going to be a little bit chilly. So when you're looking for spaces outside, you've got to take into a lot of consideration to make sure the customer is also comfortable with where the unit's going to be fitted. Final part, just before you leave the property, would be looking for the neighbouring properties around you. So if we were, for example, fitting a heat pump down here, we'd be wanting to ensure that this wasn't going to cause a distraction or a problem for the next door neighbour in terms of the noise that the heat pump will emit. Even though heat pumps are very, very quiet, obviously there is going to be a noise from them. And what we need to ensure is the decibel rating is low enough that it's not going to cause an impact to the customer next door. So if we had it sitting here, we'd measure to where the first openable window is of a habitable room. Now that could be a lounge, 
uh, a bedroom uh, or a, a snug area or something like that. Not necessarily a kitchen, but it has to be a habitable room where someone's going to be spending most of their time. And bits like objects, like a fence, is obviously going to be a noise barrier. They all come into the calculation, but you just want to ensure that you're doing that calculation correctly and providing the noise assessment report so you know that it's either a pass or a fail in your desired location for the heat pump. So Mark's now done a full survey of this property and he will sync this up to our main desktop where our programming will then bring in full floor plans, full forms with all of the information about the background of the property. So it'll have the property information of wall builds, floor makeups, loft insulation, windows, and also I can also look at the property as a floor plan, especially for underfloor heating. We've got a layout with all the dimensions and it will also give us a 3D image just so we can check to see where radiator locations are and sizing and make sure that they all fit. Um, we also have a lot of pictures on there so that when we're installing, we've got a background check of where things are going, what they look like and good for our installers to get a picture of the property and what they're about to install into. It also finds any issues when we're doing the design process to see if everything fits in the positions. It'll also give us a full PDF report of everything we've gone through on the survey and everything we're going to design to so we can do a pre-install survey once we've done the design just to make sure that everyone's happy, customers happy, we're happy and everything works and our installers know exactly what's being installed. From there, we can load it into our heat engineer software and from this, this will build a complete design and heat loss for us, including sizing of admitters and room by room heat loss. And it will show you an energy performance and a fuel comparison of each room where we'll go through the property details the room features of each room. So we look at air changes, when your room was built, if you've got fireplaces, this, will, um, this affects the air changes in each room. And then also the rooms below and above and side to side, just to make sure that you're, you've got unheated rooms above or unheated rooms below, it will change the difference in heat loss and the emitter types, wherever you're gonna have radiators, underfloor heating, um, or fan convection units. Uh, all the dimensions are put in, so the window dimensions, they're all built from your survey, they all get loaded straight in. Um, and your windows and door dimensions, any roof glazing. Vaulted rooms, again, this will make a difference in your volume of rooms, so we we'll take all that into account when we're doing the heat loss in the survey. And then we're looking at wall structures, and this section where it will be we can change to different wall structures depending on what walls you could have solid stone which would probably lose a lot more heat compared to an insulated one with cavity wall um, and this is where we can advise going forward on how to make improvements to your property to be able to utilize a lower or a smaller heat pump which then brings your energy performance down because you'll use less energy because you're lose, not losing as much from there, windows and doors, again, double glazing or single glazing will have a different U value, which means you're losing a different amount of energy through that material. So a triple glazed window would lose a lot less than a single glazed panel. Same with door and roof glazing. And the same applies for floors. If you've got 100 mil insulation in your floor, you're gonna lose a lot less heat than a solid stone floor or a timber suspended and loft insulation is also another big performance issue. Ideally you would want 300 mil loft insulation or insulated as best as possible. And then we can review the whole thing. So with this property, the whole property has a heat loss of 4.68 kilowatts. I can then look at matching that heat loss with a heat pump, i.e. a Wiesmann six kilowatt or eight kilowatt heat pump that will match that load. So every hour, this property will lose 4.68 kilowatts. We want to then utilize a heat pump that will match that energy loss. So put six kilowatts in at minus three or a design temperature. And then we can go around and look at every radiator in this property and make sure that 
each room has an admitter that is sized correctly for each room and if not we can upsize that radiator to make it give you the amount of energy or the correct amount of energy to overcome the heat loss during the design outputs of like minus three we can look at the flow temperatures which then has a massive effect on your heat loss uh, and not heat loss your heat emitters so the big effects come from the lower the temperature the better the performance of your heat pump um, but you might need bigger emitters to overcome that low temperature and that would always add to your performance the lower the temperature of a heat pump the better the performance of your heat pump and then we can look at fuel comparisons um, where the difference where you've got oil mains gas direct electric and an air source heat pump running at the efficiency that we've maintained on the temperature flow temperatures that we're achieving